Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Miguel Cisneros. I'm part of the uh, Honeywell Homes now Residio um, training and tech support department. And first of all, thank you very much for your time. We in this and at this moment we're gonna well we're gonna um, this webinar is gonna be about uh, the link series panels. Uh, why is the best wireless solution with um, and we're going to see all the advantages for your also for your home automation and video and um, we have the fast and safe solution for your projects okay um, we're going to start hold on one second just one second let me Okay, there we go. Uh, Lynch Touch, there's um, actually there is three series, three families of Lynch uh, Links Touch. There's the 50, the 5100, the 5200, and the L7100 uh, series. Uh, pretty much uh, they're similar. Not there's some uh, differences between them, but the 50 the 5100 it's uh it's no longer on we're not selling that anymore so we have only the 5200 series and the l7000 series okay um the um honeywell link uh link touch features as a bright full of uh color tactile screen as you can see on the on the picture with graphic icons, it results on an easy operation. It's really easy to to navigate from the from the from the screen and going through pan uh, to different screens, and also to programming. It's all touch screen. It's very easy, and it also has an advanced alert communication and a home automation and the control capabilities of these uh, these two panels. <coughs> Uh, those are the you can see the in, in the left side it's uh, the 5200 series the 5210 on the right side is the 7000 uh, the 7000 the screen is a little bigger pretty much that's um, you can see more you can if you connect it uh, to to camera you can see up to four cameras instead of uh, only one camera if you if you use the 5210 but basically, it's a little bigger, not too too much, and we're going to see the characteristics uh, in the following slides. Linked uh, touch series, autonomous and wireless alarm panel is 100% uh, wireless. Well, we say 100%, but it's actually, it, they have one, only one wire zone that you can you can wire one song, song number one. That's the only one. Everything else is wireless. And they all work with, uh, with Honeywell wireless devices, the, the 5800 series. It won't work with any other devices in terms of wireless um, devices for security. It won't work with any other brands, only Honeywell. Uh, it's reliable and plus innovation the touch screen and completely color it's fully color and it's easy to identify the icons because they're pretty big and um, easy to read easy to find out the to follow the the icons we're going to see some features uh the, as i say it's easy to understand the icons easy to use the touch screen nothing difficult about it uh full color graphics and easy flow of operation meaning between when we move between between screens it's really easy to go back or go forward different screens uh, it has a system and zone voice notification family message center we're going to talk about a little bit later uh integrated z-way technology it, you can control thermostats, door locks, lights, AC, 
uh, garage door, etc. High voice operation on the phone, hands free. You can talk uh, through these uh, panels. Just more the uh, benefit of these panels. Uh, it supports communication to central monitors via conventional telephone lines or GPS, my, uh, IP, or Wi Fi. All these are accessories that we can install inside the inside the panels. We're gonna see a little bit more later. Uh, communication via GSM, uh, 2G, 3G, 4G. It depends where it's uh, applicable. It's compatible, fully compatible with Tora Connect. Uh, let you control your Seaway equipment or devices through Tora Connect. You can see the weather in your city. You can get emergency alerts and traffic, and also news. And the in the screen of your panel. Through Total Connect Remote Systems uh, Services, I'm sorry, you can operate the Link Touch from any smartphone, smartphone or compatible device. It's fully compatible with Total Connect. Um, it's easy to use, easy to identify the status of songs. Menus are easy to follow and understand. Simple, simple words, simple English. Nothing fancy, nothing technical. Full text system information and show multiple songs per page. Uh, this is some benefits for the installers. It has an easy uh, menu navigation, touch programming options, reduce installation time and cost because um, basically you're not running, you're not running any more cables. Every every all the devices are wireless, so you just go to the main panel and like you start like um, programming the wireless devices. So, um, you cut a lot of time, installing time and also money, right? Uh, programming options available in an existing list. Upload and download available through Compass software. What is the Compass software? Compass software is a, a software that Honeywell and Residio has that you can download it for free at, at the mywebtech.com, mywebtech.honeywell.com, and then you download the Compass, and with this software you can you can connect remotely to the to the panels. Um, not being on site, meaning if you're in your office or somewhere else, you can, if there is a, there is a, there's a problem with the panel, you can remotely connect to the panel and fix easily. You don't have to send a technician, uh, and, you know, wasting time going to the, to the, to the site where the panel is located. You remotely can fix it. The only thing you can do it is there is a device that you gotta change or change batteries or something, you know. Then you that's that's why you gotta you gotta do it physically and on the site. But everything else, programming, uh, you can do it. You can do it remotely through the Compass software. The communication options is a Wi-Fi communication module. That it offers the lowest cost communication for alarms because you're using the internet. Uh, it's a remote service solution, installation time saving, no data cable to install, and the reflection of multi operation cost, where it is used as a backup or primary. Uh, the 4G cellular technology, 4G, 3G, uh, this modern radio finds the best signal in the area, ens uh, ensuring that the alarm signal reaches the central station. Uh, maximize installation opportunities, you know? and then it uses also the conventional analog uh, telephone line. Uh, these panels are comparable with that too. So these three ways of communication, basically, for these uh, linked touch um, panels. These advanced uh, communication options give installation company the flexibility they need to service all the customers whether they rely on the mobile phones, uh, voice over IP, or conventional telephone lines. Uh, 
we also these panels they they do um, they have the the seaway technology uh, centralizing control the seaway connectivity module also you gotta install a, a little module we're gonna see it later on um, inside the panel in order to get this this service and this uh, module allows you to integrate security lighting thermostat locks and a lot uh, some more options allowing you to enjoy centralized control at the tips of your fingers you can even do it through your phone to your uh, cell phone <clears throat> we're going to see some features of this um of this panel basically they have a uh, 80 zones uh one as we said before one is the only one zone the uh, zone number one is a hardwire zone that's the only one it has 16 um extra uh zones for for the key fob meaning uh each key fob uses up to four so if you you can use up to four uh key fob in this panel and the other 63 zones are uh rf protection zones from zone number two to zone number 64. the key fob is going to use zone 140 through 155. you can have up to 32 user code um on the 5210 or 58 on the L7000. You can see up to 128 viewable events log on the 5210 or 256 on the 7000. Those are uh, events that happening on the on the panel or the actions of the that the users uh, do on the panel. You can see it and uh, without asking the central station for a report or something you can see up to 128 um, it has a 16 reminders at the schedules the 5210 it has a the screen is a 4.7 inches color display the 7000 it has a seven seven inches a little bit uh, a little bit bigger they both have two-way uh, voice over gsm ip or wi-fi they both uh, total connect Remote has a the Total Connect has remote services, and then both can see the Total Connect cameras in local view. They have to the camera have to be in the same network as the panel. And as I said, um, the 5210 you can see in the screen up to one one camera at a time, but in the 7000 you can see up to four four cameras at a time. And these more features uh intuitive uh, programming interface two expansions port for Z-Way and Wi-Fi which is inside the panel we can we can install two modules one for the Z-Way or or one for the Wi-Fi uh two dedicated buttons for easy to use um the panic and the home buttons who are in the front uh, I don't know you can see let me see you can I can have a laser point uh right here you can see the the panic on red and the home page on the right side uh contact id and SIA reporting format options they compatible with uh, the SIA reporting format options these are the the module we were talking about this is the l5100 z way it's a little module who was inside the panel if you're going to have the c way technology capabilities and this is the l5100 wi-fi if you're going to have wi-fi on this um, on this panel those are not included you gotta get it as an extra um, this is the 50 l5100 wi-fi includes a wps enrollment that's for security the 5100 z-wave that includes the network wide inclusion uh, they both this both panel uh, include the advanced uh, the APL the advanced protection logic which is a new technology in case uh, of they want to destroy the they want to destroy the panel I'm going to talk a little bit more about it later uh, it has a garage door status and control 
uh, you can see on the panel the notifications about severe uh, weather or tornadoes. Uh, you can control the water wolf also. <clears throat> and this is the, we t here we got the Seaway module and the Wi-Fi connection, and here we got the L, um, the internet options, if you wanna have it as an option, as a, you know, you can connect the, the wire uh, internet. These are the two, the two modules, and this is the 4LG. This is for GSM communication. Uh, internet, the 4GL, and the ILP5 communication models allow the links, touch, both of them, to control and communicate with the central station via GSM cellular network or the internet. If you, if you have only internet and your internet goes down, there's no way this panel is gonna communicate with the central station unless you have uh, either a, a phone line or um, GSM communicator, right? The GSM has a little, a little SIM card over here, and it's gonna it's gonna connect to which uh, to who whatever uh, cell phone company in your in your area with the most um, cover. Whatever it has a more signal in your area, it's going to connect it automatically, and it's going to be able to communicate to central station if the internet goes down, right? Uh, more features, speakerphone options. It has a speakerphone option. Message center, you can leave messages here in the in the panel, and it's going to show, uh, I don't see it here, but it's going to show there's a new, when it's a new message, it's going to show there's a new message. You can leave messages here. Like for example, you you there's nobody nobody's gonna be in the house and then you're gonna leave a message for your son, for your daughter when they come back from from school. So they're gonna see there's a message here, so they can click on it and listen to your message. Um communication options, we we already talked about it, path, which is the analog line, telephone analog line, GSM, IP and Wi Fi. Uh, remote phone control features. This, this is when we use the PAT uh, line. Remote programming over PAT lines and AlarmNet using Compass software. We can also connect um, the Compass software using just uh, the telephone line. It have to be uh, the panel have to be registered to AlarmNet, otherwise you, you won't you won't be able to to see the to connect remotely. But when you when you uh, register your your panel to AlarmNet, now you're gonna be able to see the uh, the through Compass. The you're gonna be able to see your, the programming of the of your panel. Uh, menu driven radio registration is gonna show you the signal strength display too. Uh, real clock, uh, real time clock and calendar. Either if you are connected to to alarm me, it's gonna it's gonna update it automatically. Otherwise, you can type it in the the time and the the, the time and the and the date. Voice announcements over system status and end user device activation. This is a little table of com, uh, comparison of the all three panels. As I said before, the 5100 is um, is no longer available. Uh, only the 52 series and the 7,000 series, and then this is the comparison between zones. The six, the, the 5200 has 64 zones. The 7,080, the 52 has 32 users. You can assign. It can be up to 34 users. The the 7,000 is 48. The cameras you can see only one. In the 7,000 you can see up to four. And this is the likes, the locks, the uh, the thermostats. How many you can have it at the same time? Uh, communication. They both have the same communication. Oh no, the seven. Uh, sorry, the seven thousand has no uh, uh, pot analog lines anymore. Just GSM, IP, and Wi-Fi. The event log, one twenty-eight to fifty-six. Garage door, up to three. The 5200, the 7004, and rules, scenes, and schedule. 
20, 20, 20. They're both the same. Okay, this this uh, both um, both panel have the this feature. This is a new feature: the nice day arming and the silent exit feature. The silent exit option for away arming. It doubles the exit delay time and the arm night option. Uh, and the quick arm, if enabled, is they all gonna show in the on the screen if you're gonna you can select it or no. Uh, the nine stay arming, the system can be armed at in at night. Oh no, I'm sorry. The system can be armed in nine stay in the in the option nine stay by choosing the arm night option after choosing a stay arming. This option will only this option will only show on the keypad if a motion zone has been chosen for arm night. In the some programming, this is programming you gotta if you use, um, you gotta select the zone that we, you don't want it to to go on alarm. Uh, any zone chosen will still be active when arm in the state mode and will activate the alarm. All the other uh, interior zones not chosen on the on this programming, if you're gonna uh, add zone, will be bypassed as usual. And the silent exit, since exit warning is permanently enabled, this allows the end user to choose arming away with no exit warning, warning during the arming process. So if you go on silent exit, it's not gonna, um, it's not gonna give you any um, exit warning when you when you arm the the system. This is some. Um, SIA listed uh, features that are included in this uh, panel. Um, some options that permanently enable the, the exit error, the exit warning, the reset closing, the power out in previous state. Those are, um, this panel, they have to be compatible with the SIA listed. This is the organization who rules the whole alarm systems on the world. Other fields have some uh, restrictions and default changes, like the swing, swinger suppression. Uh, the swinger suppression is uh, the option that limits the number of messages that is going to be sent to the central station uh, for a specific zone. Like, for example, if a zone is in trouble and then you don't want that trouble to go um, like all night sending sending signals to the to the central station. So what you do is just limit it. If there is a a, um, a travel or something, you just you limit it to three times, four times, five times only. No, not all the time. <clears throat> the alarm report delay uh, by default is 30 seconds. Uh, the entry delay, the, uh, the entry delay one, the entry delay two, also is 30 seconds by default. You can change it any time. And the exit delay is 60 seconds by default. Uh, you can change it also anytime, but those are the those are the programming that are already set by 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 default by the fabric, and it can be changed at any time. But it it have to be like that, so they they compare it with the SIA listed. You know, we're gonna see a little bit of wiring. This is the inside of the of the panel. Uh, the, here, over here, we can see the um, where the telephone line, analog telephone line goes, the tip and ring, the tip and ring. Uh, here, we're going to see the two connectors for the battery. The small one is the normal standard uh, high pa capacity battery, and the other one is the super high capacity battery. Here, we can see the zone, zone number one, the only uh, zone that it, which is wired here with the 2K another line resistor. Um, here, we can see the power, the power supply. You wanna make sure in this in this case here, it's very important that you go positive with positive and negative with negative. No, it's not like the other uh, Vista panel, which uh, the AC power is not, it really doesn't matter which one, uh, which one goes to positive and negative. In this one, yes, it's a DC, so it, it you gotta make sure you put this one right. Red, 
uh, the positive and the negative, okay? Um, this is the auxiliary connector. If you want to use a, a power supply connector, that way they sell it too. Instead of uh, instead of running two cables from the power supply to the to the terminal, there is like a power supply that you just connect here. <clears throat> this is a speaker connector. This is a microphone connector. And here, you, this is where you're gonna where you're gonna install the modules. If you if you happen to get the modules, this is where you're gonna install it. This is the connector. This is a small. Um, there are small small uh, modules that they're gonna go here. Basically, this is how it is in the inside of the of the panel. <clears throat> this is the backup batteries. Uh, there is two backup batteries: the high capacity or the super high capacity. Uh, per numbers, those uh, the per number, the normal battery standby time is four hours, and the super high capacity is 24 hours. And those are the the per numbers. If you're gonna if, if you're gonna order them, uh, this is how you the, the uh, this is the tamper of um, all the panels have a tamper. If you open the if you open the the, the panel, it's gonna it's gonna send you an alarm. And this is how you install it. They have uh, the mountain hooks. Uh, this is the back case. This is the front case. And then those are the holes, the mountain holes that you can install it either. You can install it either on the on the on the wall, or you can stand up on a on a table. For that, you have to get another another part, which is a stand a stand up device, so you can have it on your on a table. Uh, we're gonna see basically those are the the features that this panel has, both of them, the 5200 and the 7000. As you see, it's uh, almost 100% wireless, and then it saves you a lot of time and cost in terms of uh, installation and managing this uh, panel. They both compatible with Compass, so you can you can um, you can access remotely this uh, the programming of this um, of these panels. It's totally compatible with Total Connect, and also you can you can have uh, Z-Way technology in this and Wi-Fi, and also you can see the camera, the Total Connect cameras, if they install the same network. So very um, the programming is very easy. We're gonna see a little bit. We're not gonna hold into. We're gonna we not we're not going to go into the whole programming thing. But we're gonna see some uh, very important parts of the programming. So you you see how see how how easy it is to to install to program the the zones the devices the wireless devices in this in these two panels. Um, this is the the main screen. You select more on the first page of the home screen. The you click on just remember this is a touch screen. So you just touch on more. It's gonna open. Another um, it's gonna open another window. So you press here tools. You have other options, arm stake or settings. You press tools. <clears throat> By default, they're gonna ask you for a, uh, you're gonna enter uh, to enter the code. By default, since we're gonna go to programming, by default the code, the installer code is four one one two. Later on, you can change it. And then here, if you pull, if you type the installer code, it's gonna send you to the programming mode uh, screen. If you put the master code, which is one two three four by default, you're gonna go to to see another another option, other features like like add users, for example. Is uh, you do it like a schedules, like you're gonna do it in, with the with the master code, not with the installer code. With the installer code is basically to to do the programming of zones, programming of um, communication, the reports. So you put the four one one two, and then you're gonna go to the to the main menu of the programming. You're gonna select programs. This, you, as you can see, you have different different options. You select programs, um, and then it's gonna show you. Another options, but before we go uh, any further, uh, there is another way to 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 go to the programming mode. If you don't have, if you, for example, you don't have the 
they install a code or you forgot it or they change it and you don't know which is the installer code. Um, there is another way to get into programming without knowing the installer code, which is this. You power cycle the, the, the panel, and then you turn it on. While the panel is initializing, you're going to see initializing on the screen. Uh, it's going to show uh, a red system standby banner on the top. It's going to display that. After the red banner changes to yellow or green, then at that moment you're gonna press. Uh, there's gonna be an icon that you're gonna press security, and then you're gonna follow it by away or stay. Any any of those. As soon as you do that, you're gonna press the clear. The clear icon. You're gonna see it. An icon say clear. Follow it by zero zero. And then after you do that, it's gonna show you the second screen as as. Uh, if you were like installing the, if you were typing in the the installer code, this is the second this is the second way how to get into programming. This is the way without knowing the installer code, or you forgot about it, and then after here you just can change it back to the to whatever you wanted, right? <clears throat> there is a note: the system must be in the disarm state to enter programming. If it's armed, you can do it. You can just you can go. You just can't go to the programming at all. <clears throat> okay, uh, when you enter to programming, both uh, both of the of the icons on the front, the buttons are gonna be flashing, meaning meaning that um, that you are in programming mode, and it's gonna show you like this system programming. So just to make sure, don't if you see if you're in programming, you're gonna see the the LED flashing. Um, the first thing we always um, tell people, like, it's to, unless you, you got this panel brand new, but um, if you got it brand new, there's no, there, there was no programming before, so it's from factories brand new, but if you got it from somebody else or you bought it on, on eBay or something else, we always recommend to to do the factory default, so you can erase everything was was saved on this panel before, like which you, you don't know, all the users, all the songs, all the reports, all the account numbers, everything. And the way to do it is you go when you go here when you get into programming mode, you go to uh, to installer code. No, I'm sorry, to system um, to default configuration. Well. The first, um, this is the first screen. So you go down to the arrow for more options. And then in the second screen, it's gonna show you default configuration. You click, you click on it. And then it's gonna show you this, all kinds of uh, default configuration. You're gonna press number one. And then it's gonna ask you if you are sure, you say yes. And then it's gonna beep like twice or three times, beep, beep, beep. And then that beep confirms that everything was erased. And then you go back with the back arrow. And then you go, you're gonna, uh, if you go to the installer code, here you can change the, um, the installer code by the police 4112. If you're gonna change it, you go clear, or you, you click on the back arrow, and then it's gonna erase it. And then you put the new four digit installer code, and then you select done. Uh, make sure you know those um, those two, the four digits. Don't forget that. And then you go, it's another option, system types. Here, you're gonna make the necessary change. Uh, this is where you enable or disable a lot of features of this panel. Like for example, the, the RF jam, if you want to uh, you want to enable or disable the two-way voice, the phone notification. Here, it depends on what you what you want to do. You either enable or disable the event lock alarm. You enable it or disable it. You know, you just click once. You just, uh, click once, and it's gonna it's gonna change it to disable. After that, whatever you do, after you always uh, don't forget. You got more options if you go down. You always save it, otherwise it won't it won't save your your changes, and will stay the way it was before. So you always save it. Um, 
to program the day and time, to just go to the day and time option, and then you click on it. If you have a communication a communicator, like for example the GSM or the uh, um, the IEP, I mean the L um, ILP P5 communicator, uh, it's going to be updated automatically via the Alumni network. If not, you just click on day and time. It's going to show you the the new uh, this new window, and then you put the you select the date, and then you and then you go down the arrow. It's going to you uh, you're going to input the time. Then you go down the arrow. It's going to input the um, the time zone. It depends on where you are. And then also at the end, always you save it. Otherwise, you won't save any any changes you just did. So you save it, and then you got the time and date on the panel. Um, this is how you're gonna we're gonna add the wireless zones. Uh, to add, edit, or delete any wireless zones, you win, we're going to select on the, on the programming system menu, zones. In this case, we're going we're gonna to configure zones. It's going um, to show you this screen. They already, it's going to, already by default, it's going to show you like zone number two is a front, front door, zone number three is a back door. It doesn't mean that you have to, you have to keep those. You can change it anytime. Just this is what it comes by the, by factor default, but you can change it any time. You, you click on Add New. Like, for example, we're going to do the front door. We click on it. We Then we're going to, it's going to open the zone number two, and then we're going to put all the information of, of zone number two. Um, the first thing is going to ask you for the serial number. You click on the serial number, and then there's two ways to learn um, to enroll the, the device. All serial number, all, all devices, has a, why they ask you for a serial number? Because all the wireless devices has a serial number, a sticker um, on the device. And this, you can enroll this via RF, or the second the second option is typing in the, the serial number on the panel. The way you do it um, via RF, via wireless, you're gonna open and close the device one time then you're gonna open and close the device again. It's gonna the first time the, the first time it's gonna get the, the serial number. The second time it's gonna get the loop number. Without you typing it, automatically it's gonna take it when you open and close the device. And then you're gonna do a third time to confirm the serial number, the loop number, and it's gonna you're gonna you're gonna hear a beep, a trip. I think it's three beeps on the system. So that that beeps is telling you that that you already took it. Then you press done and you're done. Then you go to some description. You change it. Um, it this this panel has already set up um, like a dictionary with a lot of uh, some description words. So if you if you're looking for a word, you just start pre pressing the the first letter. Like for example, if you're pressing S here, the first letter that it shows on the screen is going to be safe. And then you press the L. It's gonna change it uh, to sliding, and then when you when you when the correct word is displayed, you just pre uh, select done. <clears throat> you know until you 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 find the word and you press done, and it's gonna uh, it's gonna select it. Like for example here, we just uh, select the sliding. Uh, Word so in some description number two so we got it. Then we're gonna go to the device type. We're gonna they're gonna show you uh, all the device type. You're gonna go down for more options. Um, for example, if uh, respond type option for door, you're gonna select um, the respond type for this zone, depending on the on the respond time. It's gonna show you different options. They're not always the same. It, it, it depends on the, the device type. Okay, uh, it's gonna show you different options for the particular device type. So you, now for example, in this case is a door. So we're gonna uh, select entry exit one, and then 
we're going to select the alarm report. You want to, if you want to uh, report the alarm, yes or no, the chime, you want to, you want to um, listen to the chime on the, on the, on the, uh, on the panel or not. And then if you're going to supervise or unsupervise this uh, zone. After that, you press save. And then the zone is it's safe. So in order to program a zone, you just got to fill out all these uh, options, serial number, loop, description. Uh, you put another description you want, the device type, the response type. And then this three options, is, um, uh, it depends on, on the client. If they want to supervise it or not supervise it, you want to hear or not hear. People don't like to hear the panel all the time when you open a door, when you close a door. And if you want to report it to the alarm central station or not. Okay, this is basically how you program a zone here. Uh, how you program a, a key fob, same thing, very, very similar. You, in the programming zone, you press the key option. Uh, you go to add new. You're going to press the key uh, type. And it depends what type of, of key fob it is. We have a one button, two buttons, four buttons. After you select the the button, you go to the serial number. We're gonna same thing with the serial number. Uh, in this case, you're gonna you're gonna uh, press the left button, up up right left uh, uh, button, up left. I'm sorry, up left, like for two seconds. And then when when you when you press it, it's gonna it's gonna beep once. It's gonna show you the the serial number of the button. <clears throat> then you press it again. It's gonna show you the loop number. You press it for two seconds. You're gonna release it. It's gonna show you the loop number, and then you press done. After that, just doing one zone. Remember this: uh, the key fob have four zones. Just pressing one zone is gonna it's gonna it's going to fill out all the other zones automatically. For example, in this case, we're going to start with zone uh, 140, which is the first key fob. So the key, just doing one, the key, uh, the button key number one is going to be the arm away. The, the key number two is going to be disarm, and the key number three is going to be arm stay, as shows in the as shows in the in the in the, in the key fob buttons. The little uh, the little icon, the little pictures in each one. And then key number four, for now, it's going to be no response. We're going to change it to panic because that's that's the main function of the of the key number four, the panic. Um, and then you got to, after that, you got to uh, assign the key fob to a user. Otherwise, if you, if you don't assign a user to the key fob, it won't work. It just won't work. You have to assign a user. So you go to user, you click any user, number four or whatever, number three, and then you select it and then you're done. Uh, this is, see, this is uh, how it looks like, the key fob, with the different, <coughs> I'm sorry, with the different um, options, arm away, arm stay, disarm, and no respond. If you're going to, the no respond, how to program to panic, you just click on no respond. Uh, you have different options, which one you're going to put, 24-hour audible, 24-hour silence. You know, panic usually is 24 hours audible or silent if you're going to send it just to the central station. Uh, you click on that, you save it, and then it's done. Okay, now this is another, some other uh, features that we're going to go really quick with this, the central station programming. Uh, if you're going to program that, you go to the main screen again. And then you go to reporter, you go and click on the primary um, central station information or the secondary, whatever. If you have two, you click in each one. Um, the type, contact ID four digit, it depends on what type of uh, four digit, 10 digit, I don't know, depending. You just select it. Uh, go to the phone number, you click the phone number. If you're gonna put a nine first, you you put a nine and a comma, or if you go to, to get out that line, for example, if you've got to press nine, you put a nine comma and then the number, uh, you you press done, always done or save, depending on different screen, have different options, this one is done. 
uh, you go to the account number, you put the account number 2468, for example, in this in this screen, you press done. If you're gonna change it, it's already account account number already there. You the way you change it is you clear first or you press the back arrow and then it's gonna clear it and then you put a new one. Okay? It's gonna put the FFF and then you you're ready to put a new account number. Uh, communication uh, communicator type it depends what you have installed in your in your system and then you gotta go to the dynamic priority or dynamic the delay dynamic priorities um, if you got a communicator you gotta select here which one which way is gonna send the signal first through through a phone line to GSM to IP it depending um, what you have on your panel. And the dynamic delay, it's, um, it's gonna tell you the time. Uh, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, 15 seconds uh, to wait until they send the signal to the central station. This is where you, you change all these options. <clears throat> you go down, if you're gonna report everything, you go press to report all, and then you're gonna report every single acti activity of the, of the panel. Otherwise, you can say it, um, you can go to to the other options and and select one by one. Okay, from this other, uh, we, there is more options here. If you go down, like the sounder, um, you can configure uh, program the sounder. How um, how many minutes is gonna is gonna sound the timeout? If you want it to the alarm sound or not. Uh, the burglary bell timeout, the fire bell timeout. Of you gonna um, if you gonna uh, arm confirm. This there's, uh, there's there's other options for the for the sounder in here. Uh, system there's some system configuration here like uh, the entry delay one, the entry delay two, the exit delay, the backlight timeout, all these uh, the quick arm, the quick exit. You can in here, you can change it. There's more options uh, if you click on the down arrow. And then after you you select everything you need to select, you save it, and then you add it there. Uh, if you're gonna reset the master code, now the, the first one was the installer code. Master code is uh, by default one, two, three, four. If you're gonna reset it, you click on reset it here, it's gonna, it's gonna tell you, uh, it's gonna double ask, yes or no, and then you um, you put a new one, and then that's it, you change it. Uh, programming the alarm and communication model, this is when, um, if you have a communicator module, like the uh, GSM or IP, the way you do it, you go again to system programming and your communicators, uh, communicator pad, it's either, uh, this is where you, it's either only Wi-Fi or GSM or both of them at the same time. This is where you're gonna, <coughs> um, this is where you're gonna select it. You're gonna select the APL, enable yes or no. What is APL? Actually, APL is, um, it's a new feature, like for example, it's gonna give you additional 75 second delay to send the signal to the central station. Um, like for example, when, this, uh, when the system is up, uh, how it works. It's like, for example, when, uh, um, when you, you, you're, they're gonna destroy it. You, they're gonna go inside your house, they're gonna wrap your house, and uh, the guy's gonna want to, since everything is connected to the, to the panel, inside the panel, it's not like, other panel, like the Vista panel, for example, that the communicator and everything is in different places. The main panel, for example, is in the basement. And then it's it, all the other devices are in different other places. In this in this case, the the links is only in one only one place and everything is installed inside. So so if they're gonna rub your house, probably they're gonna destroy your destroy your panel. And then when destroy the panel, it's gonna destroy everything. 
the communicators, everything. But that's why this is um, this feature goes. Um, it's good. The advanced uh, the protection logic. Um, as soon as the delay at, um, as the delay door is open, um, it's gonna wait first. The first 30 seconds entry, depending on how many seconds, it's gonna wait for for somebody to put the alarm, the call, right? Like normally, you open the door, it's gonna it's gonna give you a time to go to the panel and and disarm the system. In this case, nobody's gonna disarm the system because they just destroyed the they just destroyed the for example, no, you just destroy the panel. So it's gonna give you another 75 uh, second delay before sending the sending the the signal to the central station. If then nobody nobody if they see it, it's an opening and nobody put the code, it's gonna send it out and 75 um, and the other 75 seconds is gonna send the signal to the central station saying like there is an alarm. If um, if it's a normal entry of, of your house, and then you're gonna open the door, the, it's gonna see, it's gonna send the, the signal automatically, but it's gonna put it on hold until it sees that you put the code, it's gonna disarm the, the alarm, the, your panel, and then that hole um, is not gonna be sent to the to the central station. But if they nobody is gonna put a, a code, then it's gonna send, um, the signals of the central station. That's the that's the main thing about the APL logic. Okay, uh, communication programming. Uh, if you're gonna uh, you're gonna uh, the communicator, you're gonna program the there's a communicator, and then you're gonna program the communicator with a LARNA, for example. You go um, you go to communicator, then you put the city ID. So this is the account number, right? City ID, the city, uh, the city ID, the the central station ID, and sub ID. If they have it done. Uh, supervision. How many you're gonna do? 24 hours. You're gonna do none. You're gonna do 30 days. You change it over here. Uh, the old alarm time. There's more options on the top on the bottom. Then you're gonna go remote account uh, communication. You're gonna enable it or disable it and multi-mode communication and has it reports, it depending what or how you want it. But this is where you program all the options for communicator programming. Uh, GSN default time, uh, the IP full time, all these uh, options. We're not gonna go in details, but this is where you change the options if you had a, a communicator on the, on the panel, okay? Uh, GSM rollover, there's some more options on the communicator programming, but it's pretty much um, every time you install a communicator, you're gonna have all different options. How you wanna program, re register, or how they're gonna send the signal to the central station and the alarm name. Um, this is where, oh, the GSM 24 hour, the test, depending on what you want it. Uh, this the after everything you done, it's gonna send um, it's gonna send the program information to Alarnet. The communicator at that time is gonna show you uh, it's gonna show you a warning that is not registered because it's not registered yet. You say okay, and then you go to un unregister later on. Uh, this is communication diagnostic setup communications register device. If you're gonna when you're gonna register the device, the communicator. Oh, sorry. Um, it's gonna register. Confile. Uh, it's gonna show you that on the screen. It means that it's, way, it's sending the information to the to Alarnet. So you gotta wait a little bit. After it coming back, it's gonna tell you registration successfully when they accepted all the options that you put. Uh, it it verifies that the account information entered is correct. Then you go back to the back arrow two times to return to, this, uh, to the installer programming screen. And then you go again to communication. Once the communicator has been registered, you select communication diagnostics. You go to the GSA information. The GSA information and signal strain will be displayed, like the signal strain 
It's over here. <coughs> you gotta have a minimum of three in order to, to have a good communication. Uh, then you select the internet um, internet information. It's gonna show you all the IP address and everything of the of the of the panel. Then you select down the arrow. You go communication status to show the status of the panel. So you're gonna wait a little bit, and then everything should be okay. Everything passed. So pretty much, uh, then you go test communication to send signal to the monitor station, and then after everything again pass, it's gonna give you the okay. And then if you're gonna test again another communication, you select the necessary test options, select by arrow icon after testing is complete. There's different testing, so you make sure your communicator is talking to the central station. This is a test Ethernet, so everything should be okay again. Then you go back, communication ID numbers. This is to view the information about your um, your panel. This is the information, the MAC address and everything about your panel if you need it. The IMEI of the SIM card and everything. You go up. You select if you want to configure Wi-Fi. You select on configure Wi-Fi. It's gonna it's gonna show you the access uh, scan access point. It's gonna show you the different wireless that you have available. You select the one you have. You click edit, and then you join it. It's gonna ask you for a password, and you put it in, and then it's gonna show you that you already like here. You're already connected to the Wi-Fi. This is uh, the local Wi-Fi in your house or whatever you you have the your panel. Another user options are like, uh, for example, you go more here, and then you go tools. Same way you go to the um, to program. So in this case, you're gonna put one, two, three, four, which is a master code. This is gonna allow you to, for example, to add new users. So the way you add new users, you go users, you click on users and the icon. Um, if you're gonna change the master user code, it's here. You click on master, you edit it, you put, uh, select user code, and then here you put a new user code. And then after that, you press done, and it's gonna it's gonna change the user code. You save it, and then it's done. Here, you go back, you go back, and this is the video uh, setup. If you're gonna see the videos, you click on the video. If you're gonna see your camera, I'm sorry, you're gonna go to, you're gonna click on the video on the screen, which is the little icon with a little camera. Uh, you you go to scan in the bottom right. You click on the scan, it's gonna show you the, the available cams. You click on the, you click on one, it's gonna turn green. If you select it again, it's gonna, it's gonna, change it to yellow and it's gonna, the edit option is gonna appear. So you go edit, you put the name of the camera, if you're gonna put a, a name, then you go back and it's gonna show you the the camera on the screen. Uh, in this case, this is only one camera because it's a 5210. If you have a, a L7000, it's gonna show you up to four cameras. You can select up to four cameras at the same time. <coughs> And last part is testing the system. There's uh, many options to test the system. The first one is walk test. Uh, the walk test mode allows each uh, protection point to be checked for proper operation. It tests the battery, uh, panel battery and sends a test report to the central station if it's enabled. Okay, we have the go, no go test. And it's used to verify um, if we got enough uh, signal strength on each devices. We have the zone discovery, which is gonna send the, the, the zone data to the Tora Connect. We had the RF sniff test um, during the, this is what I do, it's the keypad would display all active um, wireless zones. It's gonna fold each transmitter, causing each one to send signals. As the as the system 
I mean, the panel receives a signal from each transmitter. The sum number of that transmitter will display on the dis will di will disappear from the display. So, meaning it's gonna it's gonna take every single devices, and then when it it confirms that it sees it, it's gonna it will disappear from the display. Okay, uh, dial test. If you're gonna test the dialer, diagnosis. When you click on the diagnostic, it's gonna tell you to reboot. You're gonna do a, a complete power reset of the of the panel. It's gonna ask you, are you sure? You say yes. You're gonna see this little, like a dust mode uh, screen window on the panel, which is um, it's rebooting the panel. And that's it. This is pretty much. Um, about the links panel, the the 5210 and the 7000. Um, this is some uh, numbers. If you're gonna take a note, some number, take a picture, some numbers of the different uh, support tech support teams that we have. If you got any any problems with any panels, you can call any of these numbers. If you are on those, if you are on those uh, on those countries. And this is the. If you got any problems, you can send an email to that email address. That's the tech support address, homes support clear at receiver.com. And also, um, if you take a picture of the QR um, graphic in the in the screen right now, please uh, with your phone. If you take a picture, it's gonna open a, a survey. It's very important for us. To, for you to fill out the survey, which is going to ask you just a couple of questions, two or three questions, and it's in English and in Spanish. I think it's going to show you in English. If it doesn't show you in English and it shows you in Spanish, you can go on top and then you change the the language and it's going to show you in, in English. And fill out the fill out the the fields. I think it's four or five uh, questions only. It's very important for us. Um, to see how we're doing on this webinar, or if you want um, other uh, topics, for example, you just um, put it there. Which other topic you wanna you wanna hear about, and then we got gladly gonna do another webinar for you guys. Uh, without that, oh, we almost uh, we passed a little bit the uh, the time. It was one o'clock. Uh, just thank you very much for your help. I mean, for your to be here to for your time